I will not speak. He looks at me from that dark house. He gazes down from the window over the laundry room. A palpable silence lowers its smooth palm over the hole and breathes and swells. Holds the living moment in the hollow of its hand. I'm beyond the yard, beyond the chain link fence. Goose pimples rise upon the sibilant skins of midnight, sliding across the unmoored hours. Dawning dark and a deeper iteration, weighted evenly upon meridian scales, each bearing a path. One climbs forward, one slides back. Beyond the old asphalt avenues, faded from rain and sun and hammered by a hundred thousand footballs. The doors of the train slide closed with an atmosphere decapitating thunk behind me. There is no going back. It lurches into motion. My vision is extinguished, struggles to orient, and dissolves. I sense the diameter radius intuitively. The milieu is saturated with a cloying depth of night and hush of its dreamers, its prisoners, whose breaths treble the air. And I am here, listening. He stays in that shadowed acropolis. There is no exit. He never left. Seconds skitter on their spindly legs across the primordial stirrings of dawn, saying nothing. I could not effect an end to change, and all my struggles were in vain. Yesterday, whilst walking, I passed by a mother and child. Mother pushing her young teen daughter in a wheelchair. Daughter had the glow of her youth marred by a mildly yellow tinge of illness. Limbs somewhat malnourished, like a plant starved of sunlight. Mother's eyes were knotted hollows of grief and exhaustion. She had the slow bearing of a stream over stone. The teen said hello in a bright voice, as if chance encounters were a rarity. In a moment I was swept with many intuitive impressions, and a wave of pain passed over me. But I kept on. Sleep is a planet. Chest rising, falling, in smooth transit. Lungs beneath expand, contract. These biological bellows, reminiscent of turgid ocean swells. The fatigued calm that follows a violent squall. Conscious and subliminal lock step in a revolving circuit. Dyings and birthings of cells maintain their existential equilibrium, seamlessly changing orbit about the nucleus. Everything unfolded beneath an undisturbed mirror of presence, occurring in silent, full intent. The night persists, but begins to raise its heavy curtain. The stage ropes are spooling from slack to taut, and dragging folds of cloth are stirring in minute ripples. Great dawn is approaching. They struggle to sift and separate, the old day relinquishing to the new. The new casting off the chrysalis of the old. They pass and fold over me in cyclic iteration. Pass and fold, and bequeath their centers of gravity. 
everything of this world is beautifully broken and resilient, or it lies in ruin that sighs with its moldering tragedy and slumped shoulders. And we see the beauty in its surrender, a finger's breath before it rises in new incarnations. Even now, microorganisms sow the seeds of its triumphal architecture. Towers spear the atmosphere, ruins seem to slumber. Both have their place in the paradigm of contiguous and continuous transformation. Each avatar holds the photos that cried its form. And I die and die and am born. There is great value yet to that which roars between the jagged teeth of its rust and sings its arthritic joints through pillories of bone. These seated, sacral chambers and stalactite tunnels held between their knuckles and the anxious newborn is held aloft to bask, moored in the reaching sun. Every day it comes and sits beside its friends. And I come and sit and listen and speak. And water speak and listen. And the pain is a companion when songs have deserted us and hours misaligned cannot seem to weave a merrier gather. And when no one is there, I still hold a bonfire in my bosom. Still dance about a stone that could serve as a tomb, or equally well to stand upon, and with a friend seated on my shoulders, make a totem with the moon. There are no finer chords than those of fingers entwined. We find out how we fit together. And as a friend said, the energy flows to where it is needed. And he is there in the dark house, and I am here in his stead. And all I fought to hold back, fomented into every colossal incarnation, clad in spear and scale. Every fierce avatar he manifested from that blue-black abyssal to guard the womb. And I am here, his tower, erected upon the still-rattled bones of rape and shame of survival. Every wind called to ignition by the fatal abortion of what might have been, had he remained unsullied. He breathed his last into this engrossing rage of compassion, a taru. He crafted me from shards to stretch my spine and blot the stars. Bleeding brilliance from my fumarole halo. So, hold fast, carrion bird of tomorrow and tomorrow. As I wedge my triangled shoulder into this obtuse fracture, and through applied pressure, widen the breach until the world breaks against its own dull vacuum and vomits forth its naked soul. Shudder vibrates its magnetic coils against this untouchable, unassailable graven whale. A foal emerging upon spindly legs, struggling to rise. And until then, from this day unto that, I will not speak. I will stand, sentinel enigma, center stage, holding a nominal orbit, saying nothing. Rising light warms its hands against the windows, begins to saw between the blinds, drives its hot lances at angles to anchor into the surfaces of the room, driving shadows into sullen corners. They begin to rouse all around me, the sleepers, each an autonomously revolving spiral galaxy and simultaneous intrinsic organ of the cosmos. Each bears this immediate dichotomy with an innate alacrity. Complete their daily ablutions, congress amidst their immediate circles, accomplish tasks that maintain their systemic and societal homeostasis, 
and the furtherance of intention to craft fruition, ex nihilo. Blackbirds clear the evening's detritus, white birds laugh at the limb shores. The new sun pours poems across horizons in a meteoric rising. A house cat purrs its electric contentment into a lapsed warm pool. The crescent moon's hawk nose and heroic chin pinch the sky into a healthy blush. Cars and trucks woof fumes between the narrow shoulders of painted lanes. Long shadows brood over a tattered fragment of memory of that dark place. And God's above, God's amongst us. Isn't it all so fucking beautiful? And I will not speak of it, but watch and listen in curious reverie. Come and stand beside me and be my friend. There is yet time until the night arrives. Watch with the unflinching love of stone and tree. And listen from the hammering heart of God. Ataru, or Form 4, Aggression, by R. Sculptoris.